All right. Good morning and welcome to the monthly web workshop, the last one of the 2018 calendar year. Uh, today we're going to be going over asset data integration with Fluke Connect sensors. Uh, my name is Angela Forster. I'm part of the customer support specialist team here at FDS. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off with a poll question. Feel free to answer it in the uh, inside of the webinar. Uh, the question is, how many people currently use Fluke Connect with their e-main account? I'll give uh, roughly 30 seconds or so, so that way everybody can get a chance to get into the meeting and answer the question. All right, uh, looks like uh, quite a few of you do use Fluke Connect with your email account. However, a vast majority of you do not. So I hope that you find this presentation informative and it will help you integrate Fluke Connect in the future. So a couple of housekeeping items before we fully start. Uh, the session will be recorded. Uh, it will be put into Emate University uh, roughly two to four days after this recording. Uh, the phones will be muted to keep the audio nice and clear for that recording. Uh, feel free to type questions at any time into the chat uh, for the webinar. I'll be answering them at the end after I've ended the recording. So a couple of topics that we're going to go over. Uh, why integrate your Emate CMMS system with Fluke Connect? How to link your Emate X4 account with Fluke Connect? And how to view your Fluke Connect condition monitoring sessions in Emate X4? As well as how to generate work orders in Emate from the monitoring sessions that are running in Fluke Connect. So to start with, why integrate your Emate CMMS with Fluke Connect? So condition monitoring by hand takes a lot of manpower, a lot of man hours to go and physically collect all of the data on your particular assets that you would like to measure. Uh, it can only collect data a few times a day, probably more realistically, maybe once or twice a month, maybe weekly, but it's not constant. Uh, there's gaps that may have something that goes wrong and you won't be able to record the uh, data that was uh, should have been collected. You also must have prior knowledge to what those thresholds are for follow-up for those pieces of equipment. So you need experience. You need to have things fail in order to actually know uh, when and where to actually start doing predictive or preventative maintenance. Uh, this can also cause downtime when the monitoring points are in dangerous areas on the equipment, such as having to shut down a, a production line in order to get the measurements that you need, which can cost money and also isn't very uh, productive. Uh, also, you're dealing with data entry done by humans. Uh, that creates a lot of uh, chances for human error. Maybe a decimal point should be somewhere else or there shouldn't be a zero there, et cetera. So while monitoring by hand is a good starting point, it's not necessarily foolproof. So the benefits of using Fluke Connect condition monitoring is that you can access the monitoring sessions remotely. So even when you're not at the plant or you're not looking at that line specifically, you can still see the data coming in on your mobile device. The sensors can take measurements every minute or every five minutes, et cetera, depending on what you want to have set. Uh, this allows you to see constant data coming in to give you a better idea of how your assets are performing. Uh, Fluke has a couple of built-in thresholds for their sensors, so that way you don't actually have to do any of the physical work if you're brand new to using condition monitoring. You don't need to have a lot of experience to be able to have uh, predictive maintenance come out of your system. Um, you're also able, though, to set your own threshold. So if you are a more experienced person using condition monitoring, you can set what you believe to be the correct thresholds for your pieces of equipment. Uh, work orders can be triggered as soon as the threshold is met or exceeded inside of Fluke Connect. So instead of you having to record that data by hand and then going and making a work order because you need to have the follow-up done, this will do it automatically. So it takes a lot of uh, clicks out of your, uh, your predictive maintenance uh, follow-through. Uh, these sensors can also be put in areas that would otherwise be hazardous for people to get to a monitor. So you can put them on your acid vats. You could put them on your large conveyor belts, your large motors, uh, things that may uh, actually be harmful for people to be uh, near while they're actually running. So you prevent a lot of downtime for those assets as well. And this is our connected reliability framework diagram. So data comes in that you collect and organize via your assets inside of Fluke Connect. Uh, that then has a streamless interaction with the Emate system. 
that see so that way you see all the information that you're collecting for your uh, assets and it becomes part of your uh, armor armor if you will as a team so you know how your assets are doing at any given time you know how they're performing you know when you need to replace them when it would be feasible for money uh, wise to replace that asset this gives you a lot of uh, data that you can use then in your daily use of eMate as well as Food Connect. So how to link your eMate account with Food Connect app. So first of all, you're going to need to have an account. Either for uh, Food Connect Condition Monitoring, you need an FCCM account or Food Connect Condition Monitoring account already created. If you don't have one or you're interested about how to have that set up, please reach out to your CSM here at eMate uh, inside of FDS uh, group. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about that as well go over different payment options as well as different yearly subscriptions etc after you've done that you will download the flu connect app to your mobile device uh, this flu connect app you can still download even if you don't have a flu connect condition monitoring account it's just it's a free app so they're not everything inside the app will be unlocked for you to be able to use with your devices so keep that in mind if you're hitting roadblocks that may mean that you need to buy the flu connect condition monitoring account some of our sensors that you buy do come with a subscription, so please check uh, with your sales associate, with your food distributor, when you make that purchase. So once you have uh, your Fluid Connect Condition Monitoring account, once you have your Fluid Connect app on your mobile device, you're gonna go to your email account and you're gonna enter in your Fluid Connect Condition Monitoring username and password in the external interface settings underneath the account settings. So I have a quick diagram there showing you where those areas are. If you don't have access to this, potentially you may not be the admin of your account, so you would need to talk to your uh, email to admin in order to get access to that area. Also, if you don't see that area there and you are the admin, please let us know here at FDS Support. We will have to turn something on in the background potentially, so that way you do see this area. So once you've entered in your information there, you have a couple of other options or buttons, if you will, also there around the username and password. One is enable Flu Connect account, so that way your email system talks to the Flu Connect system, so that way information gets exchanged. Other option is to uh, receive alarms from Flu Connect. This allows the system, when an alarm is triggered by a threshold over limit or under limit, you will get a notification in image and it will create a work order. So if you want to have work orders created, you need to turn that on. Also, there is synchronize all export assets with the CCM account. This basically takes all of your assets in image that have been marked as Flute Connect assets and pushes them to the Flute Connect system. So that way you're not having to enter in data twice. It's kind of a nice feature, I have to admit. Um, we also have a little bit of setup, as I mentioned previously, within the assets themselves. So you will need to add the field, which is already inherently in all of the image accounts, uh, to your asset form called Flute Connect Asset Question Mark. It's a true-false field. If it is indeed an asset you would like to monitor using Flute Connect, uh, you would need to mark that field as true. And then after you've done that, you can uh, sync your assets to Flute Connect and then you can come back to this asset and link it to the Flute Connect asset that is associated inside of Flute Connect. The reason why you have to still link it is because uh, the asset description is what displays in Flute Connect and potentially you have more than one asset description that's similar. So make sure that you make that they match up. So you would want to do a link there. So let me go ahead and show you guys really quick um, what that looks like inside of Emate. So I'm inside my Emate account right now. I'm on my assets page. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the external interfaces though first, so that way you guys see what that looks like. So I'll click on my name at the top. I'll select account settings. And near the bottom, there's this option external interfaces. And I go ahead and click on that. And this will bring up my Flute Connect account. So I've already enabled my Flute Connect account. So I'm already receiving notifications inside of email. I have my username and password here. I receive alarms from Flu Connect, so I have work orders being created. And I've already synchronized all my X4 assets to Flu Connect, but you would need to do that at least the first time. So I don't need to do that now, at least. So I'll go back to X4. So as mentioned, this Flu uh, Connect asset here is marked as true, which is why I'm seeing information in here. And I would go to link 
uh, to FC Asset in order to make sure that the linkage that was made during the sync was done correctly. So there's a long list of assets here, so you want to make sure you have the right one. I know this was the right asset for this, so I'm not going to reselect a new one. All right, let's go back to our presentation. All right. So how to view flu condition monitoring sessions inside of e -Mate. There's a couple of different ways that we can do this. But first, you need to have sessions running inside of your flu Connect account. Uh, for session setup information, I highly recommend that you go to this link for quick start guides. Uh, we have a quick start guides for our 3550s, our 3561 vibration sensors, our 3540, as well as some of the other sensors that use the 3501 gateway. If you're having issues setting up and you've already looked at the quick start guide, please feel free to talk to the FTS support team. We'd be more than happy to give you a hand doing this. But we're gonna, I've already set up all the sessions that I'm gonna be using today, so I'm not gonna walk through this with you guys. So how to add a Fluke session feed to an asset. So this would be adding it directly onto the asset form itself. So you will need to make a multi-line text field on the asset form. You would need then to set the behavior to Fluke condition monitoring. Then you would return to the asset record, click the edit button, in order to configure that feed. So that configure button doesn't show up unless you're in edit mode, just as an FYI. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that really quick. All right, so as you can see, I already have one field that's, that's outputting information from Fluke, but let's add another field. So I'm gonna go to my manage forms I'm going to search for my asset form table, and I'm going to select default. So as you can see, here's some fields on the side of our asset. We're inside the design mode of our asset form. If you don't have access to this area, please talk to your admin user. They'll be able to give you user rights to access this area. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new field, clicking the little envelope there. I'm going to name this uh, we connect condition monitoring four. Why not? And I'm going to say we connect feed. So instead of a type of field as text, I'm going to go ahead and select multi-line text field. Uh, multi-line text fields are basically like your comments fields. They're large text fields. Um, so the maximum number of characters there, even though I'm setting it to four, is not actually indicative of four characters. It's indicative of four pages worth of data. So we'll have more than enough space in order to have our Fluke Connect feed output there. We'll go ahead and create that field. And when I close the window, that field will be here. So now I'm going to click on the wrench and screwdriver icon to open up the field properties. And once we're inside the properties window, you'll see your field size as four, your type is M, so we want to have the multi line text field. That's what M means. And we're going to go to behavior and select, instead of default, we're going to select fluid condition monitoring as our option. Now, if you were to try and make this field as a text field, these options don't display. So you won't be able to create the fluid condition monitoring a setup that you want. So be sure that you always use multi line text fields when you want to have the fluid condition monitoring feed on your asset. So I'm going to go ahead and select monitoring feed. I'm going to hit save and I go ahead and close this window and I close out this tab so we go back to our asset and as I mentioned the configure button will only show up when you're in edit mode. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. So here is the other two fields I have that are Fluke Connect condition monitoring. They're already configured so I'm not going to touch those. Instead I'm going to use our new field that we made and I click configure. And it's going to ask us first what device we are currently using to monitor this asset. Currently, I am using the 3561 vibration sensor, so I'm going to select that option. And when I do so, the session identifier information will show up. And in case you have more than one session running on this asset with multiple vibration sensors or multiple uh, 3550s or what have you, you can select which session you would like to have displayed. I'm going to go ahead and select the one that I currently have running behind me inside of our Fluke Connect room here. I'm going to select that one. Once I do, the sensor type will display. So the sensors here, uh, 
you need to know which asset these are attached to. I know that this asset has this sensor attached to it based on the identifying code at the end of the sensor ID. So I'm gonna select that one. Once I do, I'll be able to select which data type I wanna see, temperature, velocity, acceleration. I'm gonna select velocity and I'm gonna select it in the Z direction. So this will be the up down instead of left right motion. Uh, frequency, I have the option here to select all uh, one hour's worth of data, 12 hours worth of data, the last day's worth of data, one week's worth of data, and one month worth of data. For me though, the session hasn't been running that long. It's only been running for a little over uh, a day and a half, so I'm gonna select all. You also have the option to select a refresh period. Uh, this will be when the graph gets data from the system, it will refresh itself and display that new information. I don't recommend selecting anything less than 20 seconds, depending on what your frequency is. This may take the system a little too long to load that data, more than 20 seconds potentially. So please make sure that you have at least 20 seconds in there. For me, I'm gonna select 30 seconds. And we also have an option to change the view that we see this graph. So we can choose it as a graph. We can see it in tabular form. If we're uh, more like a numbers person, we just wanna see the minimum, maximum, and current readings, you can select that. We also have a gauge meter option, so you have little, um, uh, like almost like a fuel gauge, if you will, of information telling you what those values are. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with graphs. I find that I like graphs the most, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit apply changes. Now, even though we've just configured this, we won't see any change here on the asset until we hit save. Then this field will display the actual fluke feed, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. They're going to gather data, and then if we scroll down here, we'll see all this information here. It looks like we had a couple of spikes here in the Z direction. And as I hover over it, you'll see that it changes what time it took uh, that data at and also what that value is. And it also tells you what direction you're uh, recording it. So I'm recording velocity in the Z direction. Now, if you wanted to uh, change anything inside this graph without actually having to hit edit, you can still come up here and hit uh, frequency and you can change the frequency that you display. If you don't wanna see all, maybe you're uh, interested in a specific day or week or hour, you can see it this way as well. I'm gonna go ahead and select 12 hours. And here's the last 12 hours worth of data. So it's not as smooth as it is for all data that's ever been collected, but you get a lot more peaks, you get a lot more information, a little bit more specific information. Uh, if there were any alarms that were triggered, uh, you would see them here, as well as any connection issues or alerts, these would be displayed here as well. All right, so that is how you embed a Fluke Connect feed onto your asset itself. I'll go back to our presentation. So, there's also another way of viewing these Fluke Connect feeds inside of the asset, but this time as part of a related table. Uh, we'd be more than happy to create these uh, related table for you inside of your own account if you are unsure of how to do that. Uh, you, we can also then allow you to view several of those Fluke Connect feeds all at once. So that way you're not uh, cluttering, if you will, your asset form with a bunch of different fields showing a bunch of different Fluke Connect feeds. You can see it all in a related table instead and keep your asset form a little bit cleaner. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm inside that same asset we were just in, uh, 1006. If I go to the Fluke Connect here, you'll see that there is a add new record field over here. We're gonna go ahead and click on that in order for us to be able to add a uh, graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and select configure. And once again, we'll do exactly the same thing that we did when we were on the asset. We're gonna select our sensor. We're gonna select our session. We will select which of the two sensors we have currently using this, sense, this session. We go ahead and select that one. And we'll also select velocity and maybe instead of the Z direction, let's see the Y direction. And I'll select all as well. And I'll say the last 30 seconds refresh period. And I'll go ahead and display it as a graph as well. And then go ahead and hit apply changes. Notice again that we won't see the actual Fluke Connect graph while we're in edit mode. But as soon as we save that record, it will render here for us. So there it is, you have it now in your Y direction.
So very similar to the uh, embedded on the asset version, but now you can see multiples if you go back to the list view over here. You'll be able to see then inside this related table list view all of the other graphs if you would like to add more here. So another option for you. All right. So while that's all well and good, a lot of people don't like having to go into the individual assets to be able to view what the fluke feed is. A lot of people of Emate love using dashboards, and so we've made it possible to see these Fluke Connect feeds in a dashboard, so that way you can see every asset, every direction, every reading that you have currently running in a session right then and there on that one dashboard, so you have to go in only one place to do this. So in order to add a Fluke session feed to a dashboard, you're gonna to go to the Dashboards tab, and you're gonna select which dashboard you would like to have this Fluke Connect feed display on. You'll go to Add Widget from the Dashboard drop-down actions. You'll then choose Fluke Connect Condition Monitoring option under Miscellaneous Reports, and you'll fill in what you want to see. So what asset, what device, what session. Very similar to how we did uh, with the uh, embedded Fluke feed on the asset as well as in the related table. So let's go ahead and go do that now. So I'm going to go to my dashboards over here. I already have a Fluke Connect Condition Monitoring dashboard I created recently. I'll go ahead and select that. So we have several different types of feeds, just like you have with the Fluke Connect feed on your asset or related table. This is just giving you a little bit more information. So you can see it as a graph, as a tabular option, as well as a gauge option. So let's go ahead and add a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead up here to add widget. I'm going to select instead of others reports, I'm going to select miscellaneous reports. And at the very bottom is Fluke Connect feed. So the header title will always be Fluke Connect feed, but you should more than likely make this a little bit more unique so that way you have uh, more specific information so that way you know what these feeds are displaying instead of guessing. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this will be for my asset 1040. Um, I'll say graph. So we can change the widget height and width uh, either now or after we've added this dashboard to make the uh, display area a little bit larger. So I'm going to go ahead and select my asset ID from my list of assets. And there is asset 1040. I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Hit apply changes. And then I'm going to go ahead and select which device. So this one is currently running the 3550 thermal imager. So I'm going to select that option. And then I'm the session ID, 3550, currently monitored in progress. And then I'll select the graph type, which will be thermal imager. There's only one graph type. Unlike with the vibration sensors, there'll be a couple of options. It's going to display temperature and the channel. It's going to display the data is what channel type means. It's going to be in temperature. So I can say frequency, Let's go with all. Uh, let's do a refresh period of 45 seconds. And we're going to display this as a graph. So I'm going to go and hit apply changes. And at the very bottom here, it's going to render. And the nice thing is with using the thermal imager, you also get all the images it's taken at those time slots, as well as the actual time information here. So there was an alarm that triggered here. So it switched from main to battery power, et cetera. So if I wanted to see this as an hour format, just like we would inside the Fluke feed on the asset itself, we can see this over the course of an hour. There's a little bit of fluctuation on this particular uh, motor that I have it looking at. But that's essentially what you would need to do. Um, you are more than happy to add more if you would like. Um, but this is just what I have so far. These are all the sessions I currently have running. So. Let's go back to our presentation. Uh, if you are not satisfied with those options of seeing it in your assets or your asset related table or seeing it on a dashboard, maybe you're that kind of person who likes to use the data yourself, you wanna make your own graphs, your own extrapolations, uh, there is an option for you called uh, Export Fluke Feeds found inside the Actions dropdown on the asset itself. Once you do that, it will export the data from the sensors that you select 
that you want to see inside of an Excel spreadsheet. So I'll go ahead and show you that as well. So let me go back to our asset 1006. I'll go back to the record detail option here. Under actions, I will select export fluke feed. And it will have me select which session. So if you have multiple sessions running on this asset, you'll be able to select different sessions. I only have this one currently running. So I'm going to select that option. And then I will select which of the vibration sensors I would like to use. It will be this first one here. And then I can choose my time interval, all one hour, 12 hours, et cetera. Uh, I'll pick one hour for now. And I'll hit export. And down here is my Excel spreadsheet that was created from eMate. So that would be the other option as well for you. All right. So how to generate work orders from an active monitoring session. Uh, this was a relatively newer feature that came out within the last few months uh, with eMate and Flux integration. And essentially, there are thresholds that get set up inside of the Fluid Connect account on your asset. Uh, you'll go to Alarms after you select your asset, and from there, you'll hit Add using the plus sign button. Uh, you'll also then select what type of threshold uh, alarm you like to set. Is it based on power, current, vibration, voltage, temperature, et cetera? And then once you've selected that option, you'll be able to select what type of alarm. So it's an above alarm, a below alarm, a within range alarm, out of range alarm. And you'll be able to enter in the data that you want to see. So maybe it's a uh, 68 degrees to 90 degrees out of range vibration alarm or that sort of thing. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, so once those thresholds are set and once they get met during one of your active monitoring sessions for that asset, a Fluid Connect condition monitoring type work order will be created. So let me go and show you that right now inside of my email account. So you'll see up here we have alarms. This will be the notifications that come through from Fluid Connect. I click on that. You'll see there's a voltage out of range alarm. There are Quite a few of them. It looks like it's going to be doing it for all three different uh, locations I have of my voltage alarms. There's also ones for vibration, there's also ones for temperature, and so on and so forth. So all of those alarms don't necessarily make a work order. I'll just I'll explain that in a moment, but let's go to work orders and see what it has been created. So when a work order gets created inside of Emate from Flute Connect, it's given this work order type of FCCM or Fluid Connect Condition Monitoring. Uh, so if I go ahead and select uh, maybe this one here, number 579, uh, you'll see all the information from our ASIC gets carried over automatically, so where it is, where it's located, based on the linkage between Fluid Connect and this asset inside of eMate. That's why we link our assets together. And down here, it will tell you the information about why this alarm was triggered such as brief description, it was unsatisfactory, so it was an unsatisfactory limit instead of an unacceptable uh, limit. And the work description says, on December 5th, 2018, at 4.45 a.m., sensor, et cetera, this will be the actual sensor ID for that vibration sensor. This is for that uh, 1006 that has a vibration uh, session running on it right now. Measured a value of one of 0 0.18 uh, inches per second, which is outside the acceptable range of values. So the reason why it says null to null is because I actually use the Fluke Connect condition monitoring uh, set values for the vibration sensor, so I didn't input any of my own in, which is why it's saying this. But that's okay. We know, we know it was because of this measured value that this work order was created. Now, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you what Fleet Connect condition monitoring currently looks like inside of my app right now on my phone. So Fleet Connect condition monitoring, it looks like this little icon when you download it. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And it will take you to this home screen. So you can set up your app. Uh, logging or monitoring, you can capture measurements, or you can view active monitoring sessions there and there at the bottom by clicking the three little lines up here. 
You'll be able to open up your menu screen so you can select your assets, your measurements, work orders, teams, reports, resource center, settings, etc. But for this, I'm just going to go ahead and use our home screen and I'm going to show you what our active sessions currently look like that are running behind me right now. So we have uh, several different sessions that are running. They're all green, which means everything is good. They have connections. So I'm going to select uh, this bottom one, which is our vibration sensors. And if I scroll down here for you, you'll see that the Fluke feed that we are showing inside of our account is also being displayed here inside of Fluke Connect. So you can have the information here as well on the go. You don't necessarily have to have email set up for you. And you'll also see that I'm getting notifications as well that alarms are being reached. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. Since we've taken a look at our Fleet Connect uh, condition monitoring work orders. So why would a Fluke Connect condition monitoring work order not be created? Uh, this troubleshooting is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so either the threshold conditions were not met, which is entirely possible, uh, especially if you're using the Fluke condition monitoring set values instead of making your own thresholds, you don't actually see what those thresholds are, so they may not have been met. Uh, the threshold conditions were met in the last 24 hours and the resulting work order is still open. So right now, if uh, my 1006 vibration sensor were to set off a new vibration alarm, it won't create another work order because my current Fluke Connect condition monitoring work order for that same asset, for that same vibration sensor, is still open. So it's not going to actually generate anything unless it's been 24 hours since then. Or if I have actually closed that work order and this has happened again, it creates a new work order then. Uh, the other thing that might be why you're not getting your Fluke Connect uh, work orders to be created is that they were not properly linked with the Fluke Connect asset when the alarm was created. So if you forget to do that link to Fluke Connect asset inside of your assets table, you won't be able to see these alarms necessarily get created as work orders. So keep that in mind. It's a very follow through and flowing process. So make sure you do it all. Uh, we have an upcoming webinar. Uh, for those of you interested, it will be on why you should use a framework for reliability strategy. It will be on Wednesday, December 19th at uh, 11 Eastern time. It will be by Dave Reiber. Uh, he's a CRL slash CMRP, Senior Reliability Leader at reliabilityweb.com. So this should be a very interesting uh, best practices webinar. I hope you guys can join us. Uh, we also have quite a few upcoming boot camp trainings. Our last boot camp for the 2018 calendar year will be December 11th through the 13th on system administration in Bonita Springs. Our first one of the 2019 calendar year will be on work order management in PMs. It'll be from January 8th to uh, January 10th in Bonita Springs. So all the merrier to come down here when it's nice and cold up there. We'll still be nice and warm. Uh, we'll also have reports and dashboards January 11th, also in Bonita Springs. And then if you missed this upcoming system admin boot camp, uh, I highly recommend that you come to the January 15th through the 17th system administration boot camp here in Bonita. Uh, near the end of January uh, 22nd to the 23rd, we also have an advanced reports and dashboards boot camp. So if you're curious about how to get reports set up or how to set up your dashboards, I highly recommend that you come to that boot camp training. It will be very informative for you. Also, if uh, you have new users starting at your company, whether or not they're new employees, or if you just need a refresher, or you know someone needs a refresher since they haven't used eMate in a while, I highly recommend our new user training. It is every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, done by one of our customer support uh, specialists here at eMate. Um, we hope to see you there. Feel free to ask questions during that as well. All right. Thank you so very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this Fleet Connect presentation. Thank you.